Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a hydrofoil system on your boat. Uh, we'll go over the components needed as well as how to wire them and pipe them up as usual. And then finally, we'll go ahead and actually test the system and see to if we need to make any alterations or anything. Uh, so with that all said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the basic principle of a hydrofoil is to lower the drag on the ship itself. And to do that, what you do is you actually lower the propellers and the rudders into the water, then actually producing enough lift to bring the hull out of the water, in theory, then lowering the drag on the ship itself. Now to do that, pretty simple. We take our propellers and our rudders all the back here, drop it down uh, on a rail system, and then we do the same with the stabilization in the front to drop it down, and that will then go ahead and stabilize it, lift it out of the water, and then in theory, we should go fast at the end of the day. Now, this boat goes around 30 knots more or less at the moment as it is. Uh, what we're going to be doing is making a hole here where we'll put our front stabilization system. And then at the rear here, we're just gonna go ahead and delete all this that we don't need anymore along with the pipes that we don't need. We'll get all this connected up later on to the system itself. And then just make sure we fill all these holes that we've now made in the hull itself. Uh, so we'll go ahead, do that. Work on the front section first. Now to do the front section, pretty straightforward. Uh, once again, enclose the bit here that we don't need. So we see the hole is still sealed at the end of the day. Go ahead and close all this quickly. And then we're going to be for the front section is using our compact tracks and bases. So we'll go ahead, grab our compact track base. One positive going up, negative going down. So Let's see which way it's faced. Yeah, positive going down. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is just add the extensions. Going all the way down. And then what you do is extend it until you get to your bottom point. And then we add our actual stabilization by use of the rudders themselves. Positive facing up, guys. And I'll get into the reason why we do that later on. Once we have that system, we can go ahead and do the same with the rear. However, the only thing is we need to note is we're going to be using bigger tracks uh, because we can actually push power through these, whereas the other ones you can't, unfortunately. So we just need to build a little back section here to put the bases on. We'll go ahead and delete that afterwards. So we'll go ahead, put the track base on there. Positive facing down, same as before. Go grab the extension pieces. Extend it to how far you want it. So I'm going to go to about there. I think that's going to be more or less fine. Once we have that done, you can then go back inside the hull and connect the power up to the bases. So simply connecting the power up like so. That means then the power is coming from the engines through the clutch to the gearboxes, coming into the track base and then coming out of the track base itself. Now, the next part is obviously we need to go ahead and connect this to some propellers. So I'm going to go ahead and grab our enclosed pipes. You don't have to, uh, I'm just using enclosed pipes for this video. So what we're going to do is bring it down. Once we've brought it down, it's then gonna go into a T-piece. And then we're then going to just angle it. Down one. And then out like so. Nothing pretty, nothing fancy, just pretty straightforward. Go ahead, add our propellers. If you're worried that obviously we're not getting enough propellers coming through because obviously used to we have three on either side, now we only have two. Uh, we'll see what difference that makes. I don't think it'll make that much difference, but we'll go ahead and grab our propellers, stick the propellers on quite nice and simple we obviously then need to go ahead and add our stabilization to the rear pretty much once again guys just by adding your fin rudders i'm just going to be putting them underneath positive facing up as before and then we obviously still need our fin rudders to do our steering now to do that disable x-plane as always otherwise you get it inverted which we don't want i'm just going to place it on the side of either one just like so and then that's all taken care of all that logic is done now to actually go and control the stabilization system itself, I'm going to be using a method that I've seen a lot of guys use for uh, hydrofoils, and that is to use an altimeter of where you want your water line to be on each one of these, so they all work individually. 
So depending on where it is in the water, if it's above or lower, it will then go ahead and change the angle of our fin rudder to then bring us out or above the water itself. So I'm just going to place another one inside here. And going on this side too, place another one over there. And then pretty much what you do is you connect those directly up to your stabilizers and then they will control them. It's a very crude way and a very easy way. Obviously, you could go ahead and connect it to PIDs, uh, to the altimeters, and then we get a little bit more of an accurate result. However, this way it just works and it's very easy to set up at the end of the day. So next off, what we need to do is we obviously need to go ahead and connect our left and right to our rudders. So we can go do that right now. Once we've done that, we obviously need to go ahead and control our tracks to go up and down. Obviously the front ones take a number input whereas the rear ones take an on-off signal. So in order to control the front ones what we're going to be using is a switch box and that's pretty much going to be switching between two numbers. One number is going to be down, one number is going to be up. As I said positive is to go down so when it's on it's going to get a positive signal. When it's off it's going to get a negative signal and that's going to mean it's going to retract and then that's going to go ahead and control our actual tracks themselves. Going on to how to control that system, we're just going to deleting our old system and adding in a simple toggle button where we can toggle the hydrofoils on and off. Once again, nothing special, nothing fancy. Just go ahead, connect that straight to our switch box. Double check everything's right. Toggle button, perfect. Go to activate everything. Cool. On is going to be one, as we said, positive go down, perfect. Now to go ahead and connect the rear system is obviously when we press our button on, we want these systems to run up because obviously positive is facing down. And then when we're not placing, when we're not pressing that button, so we use our logic block not. Now I'm just going to place it there for this tutorial. So when it's not on, that button is going to send an inverted signal to these, which is then going to tell it to go up on our track base. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, that's all connected now. That should all be working. We can go ahead finally and just connect the power because we're obviously in advanced mode or the electric. Obviously, if you weren't in advanced mode, you wouldn't have to go ahead and connect the electric. But for the purpose of this video, we're working in advanced mode. So we have to actually go ahead and connect all this. Once we have that all done, uh, we can obviously just go ahead, spawn it in and double check that all the systems are working before we actually start the boat. So I'm just going to go jump in the seat chair, toggle the, that button, see everything has gone ahead and extended. Great. Disable that. And then you just want to double check our rudders left and right. Perfect. So I think we can go ahead and start the engine now. Engage the coolant pumps, start the engine, disable the clutch. And you can see we're now a normal boat going along nice and easy. Our current speed is yeah around 30 knots, which we were getting before. If we now go ahead and click our hydrofoil button you see we now extend out of the water much less drag on the boat and we're now doing 50 knots so it almost doubled it uh, obviously you could angle this whichever way by making it shorter the rear or longer it, it's really up to you and you can see now we can obviously turn the boat it's not the most accurate turning uh, but it still works pretty well and yeah, that's about it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there, guys. Uh, as always, comment below on what you'd like to see in future videos. Uh, while you're there, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for all my future content. And finally, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat informative, as always, and we'll see you in the next one.